Well, I'm still here, and I didn't get a whole lot done this week because last Sunday I came down with a fever and a little bit of a sniffly nose, and um, so I went into isolation. And I'm fine. Um, I had a COVID test. The result came back ne negative. It's a total false alarm, but the consequence of all that is I spent the last six days in isolation in my tent. So I'm going to share what isolation is like in a tent. This is my kitchen. Um, you know, a little camp stove. I've been eating pretty simply. I didn't have a chance to go shopping beforehand, so it's mostly been rice and lentils and whatever I can get from the garden. But uh, the real trick is the nights, and the nights are starting to get cold, so most of my COVID precautions have revolved around keeping myself warm, which is a bit of a new experience for me. I'm pretty hot-blooded. I don't like to be warm, but I also don't normally live outside all the time. Um, and it's been getting down close to freezing a couple times, and my sleeping bag's only rated to about 5 degrees, so I need to bundle up. So I have fingerless gloves. Um, they're fingerless paddling gloves that are meant to stay warm even when, while they're wet. Uh, I wear wool socks, and I wear one, two, three layers. A shirt, a fleece, and an outer jacket inside my sleeping bag. And if that's not enough, I have some long johns and a bathrobe that I haven't even tried on yet. So if it gets colder, and it's supposed to be below zero overnight in the next couple weeks, um, I'm going to wrap myself up in those. So I did manage to get one thing done this week, and it feels kind of special. Um, as long as I've been here at the Farm of the Good Food, I've been offering to help Susan with her eggs, and she's turned me down every time. Um, but last night, um, she had to go into town. It was going to get dark. Um, and she said, hey, there's a bucket on the back porch. Would you mind collecting some eggs while I'm gone? And so I did. And it's a pretty simple task. You go into the chicken coop. There's a bunch of uh, laying boxes up against the wall. And you walk in, you take the eggs. Um, the most exciting part is taking the eggs from underneath the chickens that are sitting on them. Um, and it's kind of incredible how passive the chickens are while you take their babies. So pretty simple, but I feel like I've contributed something other than just building. So it feels pretty good. This morning I got up to film the sunrise, and I got a lesson in cow psychology. Um, I showed up with my camera, I put it down, and all the cows immediately ran away. Because um, cows are herd animals, and they're kind of skittish. They weren't sure what my camera was. Um, and I was like, oh, well, what am I going to do? Um, I don't want to just film the backs of the cows. But the sun was rising, I didn't have too much time to wait, so I set my camera down, started filming, and after five or ten minutes, cows started drifting back. And it turns out cows, I mean, they're afraid of what they don't know, are also really curious. And so, once I'd been there and established themselves and they realized I wasn't going to hurt them, suddenly I got, instead of the backs of the cows, I got all the fronts of the cows. The cows are sort of... Mm, they're kind of looking at the, at the camera. And this happened several times. Every time I moved, um, I'd pick the camera up, put it down, and all the, cow all the cattle would disappear. And then 5 or 10 or 15 minutes later, they'd start drifting back. And this worked very well at the watering hole when I got down there, because I showed up and all the cattle ran away. But then, after 15 or 20 minutes, suddenly they all wander down. And suddenly they start feeling a little bit thirsty. And so I got these really great shots of cows drinking and waiting, and, and it's just patience, I guess. So there you go, cow psychology. Anyway, next week I'll be back with more cattle anecdotes because uh, we'll be prepping for cattle auction and bringing all the cattle back onto the farm. So hopefully I'll have lots to show you then. Uh, you can check that out uh, by subscribing to the YouTube channel. Um, you can follow the documentary by going to the handsthatfeedus.ca and signing up for the mailing list. Uh, or you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And I'll uh, see you next week.